for those of us who don't know about your music production and background, um, tell us a little bit about, you know, how would you describe the music that you make and the kind of journey that you're going on? Um, just to explain the music that I make, um, pretty much it's no genre really, but it's more like, you know, house music, um, jazz, oriented, you know, live instrumentation, and, you know, like a hip hop as well too. So it's kind of really, it's no genre. It's just, I, you know, it's all together, like mixed together. And you've got, obviously, a church background, and, you know, it's clear a lot of that influence is in your music, from what I can hear. Um, my background started as jazz. I started doing classical, and then I went to jazz piano, and after jazz piano, church, you know what I mean, pretty much, yeah. So that's basically a mix, a celebration of your, your background, I guess. Yes, yes. Yeah, with a wonderful fall to the floor, and then some. I know, right? <laughs> and my piano lessons, I got there from Sun Ra, okay. um, one of Sun Ra teachers. Um, that was kind of Al useful. In Alabama, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So what have you got, what are you doing for us today? So pretty much what I'm doing um, is kind of like um, I'm showcasing, basically I'm just letting everybody know basically the things that I use when I produce, like when I'm on the road as well, you know, like as far as like battery, mm -hmm. I use that and I use like pretty much some of the complete. So I'm kind of just going to be kind of just, you know, just giving you an introduction of just the stuff that I use and kind of just telling you like as far as like, for example, even with my drums, you know, even how I stack my drums just to make it thicker and just my concepts, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. We are all ears. Yes. So you've been um, using battery for a while, right? Um, yeah, I've been using battery for um, for a minute, machine as well. You know what I mean? One thing I can say I love about, I first started off with machine. Machine is real dope. I mean, first I use an MPC, an MPC 2000 SL. But I love the machine because it gives me the feel of an MPC as far as like the live programming. You know what I mean? And a lot more flexibility. Tends yes, I like it so much better. One thing I can say about machine, um, it, it's it's quicker like as far as like, um, programming your drums and just doing it in a quicker way. You know, even when I'm on a roll, if I'm on a plane, I can just automatically just pull my laptop up and just program sounds and kind of just get like a skeleton idea together. Yeah, so I'm gonna start it. So you're loading an instance of battery now, right? Yeah, so pretty much I'm just going straight from scratch. Um, basically, I start off when I'm producing, I'm finding my drums. So, yeah, just starting off on that. That's a good place to start. So pretty much on like, kind of like on machine, I use that to kind of just make groove and I like to kind of like add my swing to it. To kind of give you like a little swing. Sure thing. Not that much, just a little bit. So that's at the top there. Yeah, yeah. I guess, do you tend to just start, um, rather than starting with a pack straight away, you just basically build? Yeah, I kind of just, from, kinda from, just from, go, from yeah, kind of just go by groove and just build samples and sure. different ideas and just go from there. Playing with the pitch, you know, tuning the drums, kind of changing it up a little bit. Then pretty much I pull up the keys. This is where I use contact. Um, I like the Mart one. It's pretty dope. You know what I mean? The classic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pretty
pretty much I just vibe out like an idea user. I hate, I hate you, man. <laughs> Already just like three quarters. <gasps> Yeah, that's one thing I can't say I love about Contact. I mean, used to be honest, I use, you know, Keyscape, but one thing I can say the closest that was kind of close to my Fender Rolls, I can say, is Keyscape, but oh my God, like this Carby Mart, Mart 1 is like nice to get the job done, cool. especially when I'm on the road, because there's some VSTs you'll try to use and you want like a, you know, something kind of similar to the Rolls, but I can't say I like this Carby Mart 1. It kind of get the job done for me as far as... So usually when I'm making a track, I start off with... Sometimes it could be the drums, and sometimes that's why I start the drums out, pretty much. And then I kind of just vibe. So I kind of vibe it kind of like if I'm playing for a band. Like if it's a drummer, they jamming, and I just start like jamming keys on top. Kind of just to get the idea together. So I'm keep vibing. And something just rudimentary. I mean, you know, when you're starting a project, are you, you, are you always thinking like 122 or sometimes you vary the tempo? Oh, do, you have a, do you have like a go-to tempo when it comes to... Oh, really not. Go-to tempo, not really. It's just kind of like this just was already set on there. So I said like, hey, I'm just going to do it with this. <laughs> so pretty much the tempo just, I mean, it just depends sometimes. Um, it could be 89. It could be slow. It, it just depends sometimes. Yeah. Literally switch on vibe. Just see where it takes you. Yeah, just right on. Okay, yeah. Cool. As y'all can see, you know, y'all already know I'm using like Ableton, so it's like one thing I can say, usually I kind of use this when I'm using like Contact to kind of just jam ideas out pretty much with the uh, Contact. Yeah, sure. I mean, add strings and just different stuff like that, so. Cool. see the screen, please? Thank you. So what you doing now, you're just basically just adding some distortion or something? Changing the vibe of the. Right yeah, cool. Okay. Notice that you didn't quantize those keys. Not that you have to. No, no. For me, no, I really don't have to quantize. Sure. <laughs> no. We, we, it, we, we can hear that. It's quite clear. <laughs> A minor question. Um, so um, you obviously know the kick drum's there, and you know it's going to bang, which is we all know it's going to bang. So in terms of writing these keys, are you deliberately taking the kick drum out just to hear, how, you know, the, what the key, keys have to offer yeah. without the kick drum, or is it just you're just you know, is it? Oh yeah, the only reason I take the kick drum out sometimes is I guess like. I guess sometimes I feel like you really don't have to have a kick as far as like making the, you know, getting the idea together pretty much. So it just depends. You know, sometimes I may have to kick in, sometimes I may take it out pretty much. Yeah, I'm trying to um, volume up a little bit. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Volume, please. Thank you.
Cool. You've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really not. I'm just kind of just jamming on. <laughs> Well, before you delve in a little bit deeper, just you know, for, first of all, for those of us you know, who aren't keyboard players, um, you know, what advice would you give to people who want to be able to have the kind of chops that you've got in terms of you know, <coughs> and voicing? I mean, for me, I mean, now I just say like, I mean, back then it was kind of hard, you know, but now we have like, you know, YouTube, pretty much, you know, we have the, you know, pretty much like videos, you know what I mean? So you can kind of just pull up videos. Even me, I'm a piano player, but I'm still learning. Like, I pull videos of just, like, different chords, minor chords, majors. You know what I mean? As far as, like, get the, get the so basics. really, to be honest, you know, really, you don't have to be a keyboard player, really, to play ideas in a way. I mean, it's cool to know it, you know what I'm saying? But um, pretty much, it's kind of just, I tell anybody when you're producing, it's kind of just vibing your idea out. That's really what it's about, getting that getting that idea out okay. at the spontaneous, yeah. So in terms of just what you've just put together, there's obviously the kind of root motif kind of thing with the roads. Correct, and correct. Piano on top of that. Was that deliberately like an octave above just to give it a bit of spike or is that what you're, what you're thinking? Or uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I was thinking for this. I was thinking like adding like a roads. I love like the roads and pretty much I like the strings. I like to add layers on top of my yeah, tracks, so you know, pretty much. Yeah. So your build, the building blocks will be layers essentially. So the idea is that there's a root and then something... On top, there's a little bit more dynamic. Correct. It just, yeah, it just depends. Like I said, sometimes with me, it could start with the drums pretty much first, and sometimes it can start. But for me, I mean, at this point right now, it's about pretty much the progression. Trying to get that out of the way first. That's why I really I don't. And then usually after I get the progression together, that's when I start adding the drums after that, after that process. So, yeah, battery, I love battery. Battery is dope, you know what I'm saying, as far as, like, you know, with making drums. Um, so one thing I like about battery, as far as, like, making your own kit drums, is pretty dope because you can take, usually this is my trick. Let me see. I'm going to go through drums. Uh, okay. I kind of like to take one kick. Let me see. Pull it back up. Okay, give that kick. So I kind of like to layer my kits pretty much to, you know, to, to make it thicker, you know what I mean, as far as and kind of like touching them up. So usually starting off the process, I'm just kind of just looking for drums right now. Let me see. Let me see. And one thing I can't say I love about battery, you can go into it and kind of play with like, like right now, as you see I'm doing right now. Like, uh, let's, let's see, go to the drum, go back to, go to battery, bam, got it, okay. Okay, so pretty much, let me see. So pretty much I'm playing with the tone, kind of trying to touch it up. Yeah, sure thing. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. So in terms of your choice of um, kick drum there, in terms of fattening, you're saying, are you going for the kind of usual something playing the kind of sub low end and then something that's a bit more mid range? Is that what you're thinking? In terms right. Of, yeah? you, you just said it right on point. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm looking for something with a mid range and something with a low. And then sometimes it's not really there. It's kind of just trying kits out together. Okay. And just seeing which one kind of hit together. Okay. And another way I kind of like to kind of touch them up is by tuning them both up. So I think if you're tuning them up, you can tune one a little more higher, one a little more lower. 
And sometimes when you put them together, they'll really have a nice sound together. So pretty much like to have both of them to play at the same time, which you see right me, like I'm at the key range. So pretty much you bring the key range down to C1 and you have both to play. So I kind of like still touching it up, trying to get it. Cool. Get it sound right. Make it sound good. Okay. Cool. Okay, kind of adjust that a little bit. I kind of like to adjust the volume, kind of touch it up a little bit. Sure. Vintage. PC. Of course. Playing with the vintage, you know what I mean? That's one thing I can't say I love about Battery 4. You can really just go into it and kind of just mess with stuff, pretty much just to put your drums together. Um, so, sure. So. And it, uh, would, is your approach to using Battery different to, say, building beats with Machina? What role do they, do they have a specific role um, for you? When you're I'd doing? say Battery 4 is more for, like, sound designing, kind of like what I use that concept for. And then Machine is more for programming. So it's kind of like I'm using, you know, it's a weird process, but I'm using like that, and then I'm using machine. No, I guess battery's a lot more visual, right? Do you know what I mean? It's like it's... Correct. True, true. Mm. You're rinsing the instances, man. Just need a little bit of a tweak, right? Okay. We're, we're with you. We're with you. Might have to jump with Re after. Sure. So bringing up the Scarby was just like to get vibes for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's usually, you know, usually when you're making a track, you're not going to use that sound. Sometimes mm -hmm. you may jam with it. I mean, yes, you may jam with it pretty much. And you may change your mind, be like, yo, I want to use something else, you know, so. Sure. Uh, let me see. But you've still got the idea of the bass yeah. pattern. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, I got in the idea mind. still in my yeah, head, cool. pretty much. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. 
So here's the thing, right? Oh, wait, 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 going. So what are you thinking? You think it's Scarby bass or Razor bass? What do you think? What do you think? It, what, sorry, who's that? Razor, Ra Ra you think Razor? Yeah. It's definitely got, it's got vibe and texture to it, hasn't it? Oh, Razor, yeah, Razor? Okay, cool. Any, Scarby, Scarby? Cool, all right. It's, it's sure, any Scarby takers here, no? What, what are you thinking, Scarby? I know you did. That's what I'm asking you. Put you on the spot. Oh, so oh, it's fine, man. It's good. Just say razor. Just say razor. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> razor. <laughs> yeah, I say razor, man. Like that's one thing about me when I'm playing with different sounds. Like you know, with playing with contact. Like I love contact, but I guess sometimes you know I come from like the analog. So you know, sometimes you may come go through some sounds. You may be like, yeah, this sound kind of cheesy. No disrespect, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> don't kill me, native instruments. You know what I mean? There's, there's a place for cheese. Real feedback, though. It's you know, it's about, con it's about context, man. It's about you know what I mean, but, but I'm not gonna lie. One thing I can't say if y'all get contact. Contact is dope. You got some nice stuff in it. But one thing I admit, you have to go through it. Some stuff you might have to play with the filters, the cutoffs. And it just pretty much just playing with different things. Yeah. They kind of just adjust it. Sure. And I guess there's a place for conventional instruments, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, which is why I kind of asked that question. So the, you know, the Scarby bass, it's an electric bass, right? So yeah, it's an electric bass. It's got a particular aesthetic. Yes. Now, whereas Razor is synthesis, so it's much, you know, much it's, more possible. It's much. You're right. You're right. Cool. And like I said, it just depends sometimes. Because me, I have, um, it's this VST called Trillion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trillion is like crazy when it comes to, you know. So, but my favorite really with um, Contact is really the Razor mm -hmm. and kind of like Massive. Massive is dope, but you still got to go through. That's one thing as far as like when y'all producing. So if y'all use a Massive or Razor, one thing I can say, don't just use the preset. Yeah, so You're going to have to tweak it, touch it, yeah, it up sure. in a way because some sounds will kind of sound kind of quirky. You know what I'm saying? You got to just like touch them up just to get them to the vibe of what you wanted of uh, producing. But one thing I can say, I like contact. I have keyboards at the house and stuff that I use, but it's just cool for like, that's one thing good about um, contact. Like if you're on the road and you're trying to get an idea out right at the spontaneous, you might not have like synthesizers or stuff with you right then. But it's just good because you have it and you can use these tools to pull up to just get an idea like me. The um like the Scarby, like I played the Fender Rose, but I have a Fender Rose at the house. So I go back and play the Fender Rose. This is just to give a the give Sketch, a vibe. Get the color. Yeah, so sure. that's one thing I can't say is great about this. Even with um battery four, it's cool for editing your sounds. Even making your own drum kits is very great. You can take snares, claps, and kind of just you know, it takes time, you know what I mean, sitting down, but it's just, you know, just a vibe pretty much. Yeah. So <laughs> So pretty much I'm just kind of just jamming, you know, pretty much with the, you know, the cutoff and kind of just making it so, funky. Some, some movement, yeah. You give the movement, cool. you know what I mean? So. Also noticed that you um just you just literally went for the orcs end on the reverb on the bass. Is that like a standard Byron thing to do? Yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's um, I mean, y'all don't try that, but it's just something I do. Okay. Pretty much to kind of just touch tracks up and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Just something I do.
Cool. Okay. Your in instance, man. Instance. Just auditioning, yeah, okay, cool. Just aud auditioning, reflection, claps, right? Sure. Let's talk about um, instances right about now. So, uh, you know, everyone has obviously has a dis different approach, but notes is that you've got lots of instances of things. Is that because you want the flexibility of being able to mute things in and out on the fly without having to go into the hardware? Is, it, is that the vibe or? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I kind of just want to mute stuff out. My main DAW is really Ableton, so pretty much just like kind of just getting skeleton ideas out together. So each channel's got a responsibility. So even if you've got, you know, with Machina, you can obviously have a kick snare hi hat, etc. You find it easier to have, say, one instance of Machina with just a hi hat and one instance with just a snare. Is that oh, oh correct? For, well, for this right here, for this one, what I'm going to do, like right now, I just added the snare. And uh, right now I'm about to add like a hi-hat. So pretty much with machine, like I kind of like to kind of just keep it all together. You know what I mean? And then what I do, I just drag and drop after I finish and get the concepts together. Oh, the audio. Yeah, I, yeah I, dr I drag and drop the audio and then I start editing and go from there pretty much. That's how I do. Cool. Um, before you get all, oh, before you get all hi-hat on us, which was obviously going to be amazing. So let's see if these guys, this guy had a question at the front here. P perfect. Oh no, ask your question, yeah, yeah. Hold on one second, one second. I saw that you're using the reverb on the bass, so that was my question, if you, that is a common technique in your uh, daily routine. On yeah, I can say that's common, usually not, not all the time, sometimes for like a vibe, I guess, like, um, but usually when I'm doing kind of like the synth bass, I kind of like to add like reverb on top of it, kind of just to give it, you know, you know, I mean, it's just, I guess it sounds good to me, you know. <laughs> It's just my concept. It's a, a spatial you know? thing rather than it being a kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I hate for stuff to sound super dry, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of like to add, like, reverb just to give it, like, an atmosphere, I guess. Oh, cool. I don't think so, man. <laughs> Low cut, do you, do you process the sound, like, in terms of EQ and... Or do you oh, you're talking about... Yes, I do process. I do do that, like, after I complete it. I have at the house, I have UAD. I use UAD plugins. And pretty much, I do my processing on Pro Tools after, you know, after that. Oh, you can ask a question. Let's go. Okay. Oh, the actual, the reverb. So do you low cut the reverb as well? So, or do you, is the sound of the sound? Or do you have to go? Oh, do I low cut? Oh, really, at the moment, like right now, I'm just kind of just making a jam. So I don't do it right at the instant. But I do, I see where you're coming from. Yes, I do do. I do go into the reverb and kind of like touch it up pretty much like, and do that. You know, yeah, yeah, I do do that. But, but I really get the sense that it's more about what you're hearing. If it's cool, it's cool, right? Yeah, it's, it's just a vibe pretty much. Uh, unless if there's a problem, if, if, if I get the sense that if, if there's a problem, if there's an issue, for example, with bass frequencies in the reverb, you'll go and fix it. But if it's working, then don't fix it. I mean, yeah, I mean, with, one thing I can say when you, you know, just when you're making music pretty much or anything, like, you know, even when I'm using my, you know, my plugins like Neve, API, and stuff like that pretty much. Um, I mean, I think with any track or when you create a music, you got to always give each instrument its own space, its own frequency. 
So it's like sometimes, you know, your hi hat, she want to, you know, cut it, you know, pretty much cut the bass out of it. Because sometimes as far as when you playing it on speakers, you know what I mean? You pretty much like the sound kind of just be clashing together and they'll sound super muddy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I see where y'all coming from. It's good to do. But it, in a way, it's kind of bad that the double add that stuff a lot because it makes the mix real muddy. So, but you know, I guess I do that process like usually when the track is like done and then I take it through the mix and stages and I go from there. Like, yeah, yeah. So, where we're at now and what, what we're with you now is just the composition the ideation phase, right? Just getting a vibe, getting a feel for the track. Yeah, again, you know, elements. Yeah. You're getting comfortable pretty much. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, right now just cranking ideas out on machine right now, kind of just you know yeah, sure. just live, so that's it. Just experimenting with layers and textures, just getting a vibe. Yep, sure. Okay. Tweak, plan, tweak. So again, with the swing thing, it, it doesn't really, you know, one, one instance of machine has got one swing, another instance has got another. It's all good, right? What are you thinking? So just when we thought it was going to go down the Rhodes vibe and the piano vibe, now you're going, yeah, okay. So was that just like because you felt like changing the vibe or are you thinking there's, this is like method to the madness, you're going to create a contrast <laughs> during the track? <laughs> I guess with me, just, I mean, just changing the vibe, I guess sometimes when you're making a track, you might just want to change it up. You know? yeah. <laughs> but of, you might be like, but of course. like, oh, I'm not feeling that, let, let me do something else. <laughs> No, 
but it's, it's also for, um, you know the good thing is you've got clusters of ideas you know that you got you're obviously going to bring together you know so yeah so I know this is just you know it's a demo but it's it's an insight into your production and composition process right so where would you go from here I mean you know would you continue to kind of create clusters of ideas and chords they're all obviously in the same theme same kind of chord family scale or whatever so pretty much what I do um okay let's just say right now the roles I got that so let's see so okay so usually on machine well I use basically I just use machine native instruments I don't use it to it's kind of weird to program I mean I use it like as far as machine the program just to get my ideas out but you know, some people use machine to do the whole track. I don't. I don't do that. You know what I mean? I like able. Was, I like able the, to. Yeah, you know, pretty much. That's your sequences, right? So, so I'm about to get ready to show that process right now. What I do. So let's see. Um. Okay. Let me let me take everything out. So I'm about to record just to get an idea. Uh. Okay. So yeah, so I guess what you'll do, you know, as you're as you're doing it, you'll have your clusters of sounds. Yes. And then basically stick it and record and basically automate the arrangement, right? Oh yes, yeah, so, yeah, that's you just said it, automate it. So I mean when I'm doing stuff, I kinda like when I'm kinda like laying this the like the stems and the things down pretty much. I kinda like the freestyle it kinda like if I'm DJing, you know what I mean? Kinda just to feel the vibe and kinda just to make the song structure pretty much. Really got that. Yeah. I think we've got time for maybe one question before we end it. Okay, that's all right. Mesmerized. Mesmerized is good. Well, listen, Byron, thank you very much for that insight, man. That's really, really insightful. Well, no, thank you so much. Yeah, give it up for Byron, man. Cool.